get started. Page four oh seven. <clears throat> sent his son they called him Jesus he came to love heal and forgive he lived and died to buy my Savior lives because he lives. I can face tomorrow because he lives. All fear is gone. Be child can face uncertain days because he lives because he lives I can face tomorrow because he Because he lived, and then one day I'll cross the river, I'll fight life's fine, no war with pain, and then as day.
we, we, we made it work. It was. Yeah. <laughs> it's just like we practiced it. What are you talking about? <laughs> Don't ever let them see you sweat. Amen. <laughs> just like we planned it. So, praise God. I tell you what, this crowd over here are missionaries. And this crowd over here are backslid. Amen. It's a good day to be a duck. Praise the Lord. Good to be here. Thank y'all for being here. Amen. Uh, one quick announcement. If you are going to Knoxville uh, with the youth on the 14th of February, we need you to turn in your money tonight. It's $15 per person. So that's just for the tickets at the door. And um, if you're planning on attending that, if you'll get with Chuck, uh, or Brenda or one of the youth leaders and let them know and uh, get your money to them. I'm sure they would appreciate that, so keep that in mind. All righty. Any prayer requests, praise reports? Okay. Amen. Let's remember that. Amen. Praise the Lord for the rain. I don't know about you, son. I'm a little worried. Praise him for it. Might as well, right? Amen. My wife wishes it was snow. We'll praise him for that too. Yeah. Don't get too spiritual back there. Amen. Yes, sir. Amen. 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 That's good. Amen. How I many? Amen. I started to say lost people. We know them, right? Right here, all over. Let's pray for the lost. All righty. Let's go to the Lord in prayer and we'll get right into the Bible study. Father, we love you. Uh, we're honored that you love us. You came. You sent your son to die on the cross and we have life eternal. Thank you so much, uh, Lord, that we have that and we can, uh, we can just uh, enjoy the fact that we have been bought with a price we're born again and uh, and there's nothing the enemy can do about it what an awesome awesome feeling that is thank you for that tonight thank you lord for allowing us to get here and we do thank you for the good uh lord for the good rain uh, we believe everything comes from you and it's all good all good things come from god and we do want to praise you tonight for being good to us giving us what we need always uh, meeting the needs of your people. And so we're thankful for that tonight. We do pray, uh, Lord, for all those that are sick, our prayer list. I know there's many, many names on there. And Father, we just want to lift them up to you and ask a special touch on them that are sick, those that are hurting. Uh, Lord, I know we have some that are bereaved in our church family. We do lift them up to you. We lift up Brother Kevin and uh, his whole family tonight in the loss of his mother. We pray you'll be close to him, God, in the next few days and in the coming weeks and months and uh, that, God, your presence would just be real and your grace, God, that um, they would see just how sufficient it really is. And so we pray uh, for that tonight. And we pray for those others, Lord, that uh, we know we've got several had tests. We've had some had surgery. Uh, we thank you for that. Thank you for uh, Lord, my little grandson, Aiden James, came through surgery today and is at home doing well tonight. And we praise you for that. Thank you for, um, Lord, just meeting those needs. And then, uh, Father, we pray tonight for those uh, that are the sickest, those that are lost. They have an eternal sickness tonight. And the only thing, God, that's going to change them and heal them and uh, is to have an encounter with the Holy Ghost and the drawing power of the Holy Spirit, uh, to confess their sins. God, your word tells us with the mouth confession is made in salvation and that, God, they would be able to confess their sins and then walk uh, up the aisle professing Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. We pray for those that are lost tonight, the one that might be closest to hell and not even know it. Uh, we lift them up to you tonight. We pray for our church, our church leadership. Thank you, God, for giving us good men and good ladies here, uh, godly men and women, uh, Lord, that we can glean and, uh, 
and walk along this journey with. We pray for them. We pray for our church in the coming days, weeks, and the month. God, with decisions that need to be made, I pray you give us wisdom in how to uh, do what's best for your kingdom. We love you now. Meet with us tonight. We do pray for our nation, a nation divided. We pray tonight that, God, you would heal our nation, that you would save our leaders and uh, that we could once again be one nation under God, indivisible. Would you grant it tonight, I pray, that we lift up our national leaders to you. We pray for those, Lord, that are lost, that they would be saved. And we pray for those, God, that, um, uh, that don't want to follow and lead according to God's word, that they'd be replaced no matter who they are. Uh, so tonight, that's our prayer. Lead God and direct now, Father, as we study your word. And we're going to glorify you and thank you in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. I want you to turn in 1 John, uh, 1 John chapter number 5, and I think we're going to read, uh, begin reading in about verse number 13. I do believe um, very, uh, very good stuff here. I, uh, Monday and Tuesday, I was in Cincinnati with um, the NAMB mission Nary's had three church planners I met with up there and um, got an opportunity to talk to them for just a little while and see their work and and what God's doing through them one of them was an Arabic pastor from Amman Jordan and when we asked him uh, how uh, what is the number one thing that you need us to do uh, first in as a pastor as a church what what would be the biggest help uh, to you right now more than anything else and he said if you would please pray and have your church to pray more important than anything else I said that's that's the one thing if we could do anything in the world for you what would that be and he said I want you to pray I want you to pray and that kind of stuck with me a little bit and then I met another guy from the Dominican Republic um, David Pinata. And we asked David that same exact question. We said, David, what can we do for you? What, what, would be the, what would be the number one thing that we could do for you, for your family, and for your ministry out of anything you could think of? And he said, to pray. And I said, man, that's good. You know, they didn't say we need more money. Obviously, that's always a need. We need, you know, we need more of this or more of that. Uh, but out of all three of them, we got to talk to and pray with the thing that the theme was we just need you to pray and then we need you to go home and we need you to tell your churches to please pray for us that's the number one thing that we need we want to partner with you but right now we could use prayer more than anything else that is all three of what they said and so like I said that kind of stuck with me and uh, I was talking to uh, several of my buddies today and yesterday about that and these words kind of came to mind in first John chapter 5 and in verse number 13 here's what the Bible says these things have I written unto you that you believe on the name of the Son of God that ye may know that you have eternal life and that ye that ye ha and that you may believe on the name of the Son of God and this is the confidence I think I may have directed you wrong. First John 5, 14, I'm sorry. 14, 15, and 16. And this is the confidence that we have in him that if we ask anything, this is where I want to get to. This is the confidence that we have in him. First of all, I'm writing that you believe on the name of the Son of God, that you can be saved, that you know you have eternal life, and that you believe on the name of the Son of God. The second thing, I love what he says here, is, is that and this is the confidence that we have in him, that if we ask anything according to his will, he what? He hears us. Well, that's good. And if we know that he hears us, whatsoever we ask, we know that we have the petitions that we desired of him. And then verse 16, and if any man see his brother in sin, or sin a sin, which is not unto death, he shall ask. And he shall give him life for them that sin not unto death. There is a sin unto death. And I do not say that he shall pray for it. I thought about those verses and I thought, man, how powerful is that? 
But when people ask me to pray, yeah, let me ask you this. Hey, yeah, have you ever prayed and feel like you didn't get an answer? Anybody here ever done that? Amen. I've prayed and felt like, man, I didn't even get an answer. And, and I, I thought about that and I thought, man, if I'm going to pray for missionaries, or I'm going to pray for our church, and I'm a, I certainly want an answer. Can you say amen to that? I mean, when I pray, I like to have an answer. And when I haven't gotten answers, then there was some kind of interruption. There had to be some kind of interruption uh, on my part. And so I began to read and think about that, and I thought, you know, there really are some biblical conditions, not just for prayer, that's what we're reading about there, but for answered prayer. You ever thought about that? There's a difference in prayer and answered prayer. Do this. <laughs> there's, a, there's a big difference. We, we can pray for anything, uh, but when we pray, we, we want our prayers answered. Amen. And so I thought about that, and I thought, you know, sometimes we make it complicated. Uh, sometimes we come up with some uh, profound words, or we think we do. And the reason we do that is because um, we think that we need to cause God to be interested in what we're saying. <laughs> Am I right about that or not? Amen. We want God. Listen, I got to make God. I got to make this interesting so God will hear me. <laughs> and and I, that kind of crossed my mind a little bit because we did a lot of praying the last couple of days, and we, man, we did a lot of laying on of hands and praying. And I don't want that to scare y'all. I believe in that. I we we put our hands on the missionaries and we prayed. And man, I heard some men. As soon as they started praying, it was like somebody uh, took a uh, 120 volt uh, fence. Uh, charger and plug that thing up and hooked it to my fingers because I I felt a jolt. Amen. Uh, I I like being around guys like that because when I go to that guy and I say I want you to pray for me, man, I believe they can get a hold of God. Say Amen. Uh, I like that kind of praying, and I believe we can have that. I believe, uh, but I think sometimes we we make it so complicated, and we make up, and we we think we've got to have all these profound words to keep God interested in it. Uh, I think some people love to pray, and then there are other people that are scared to death to pray, and, and because they don't feel like they know how to do it right. And after tonight, I hope that if you fall into that category, you'll have a little bit more confidence. Prayer, look at me, church. Prayer ain't complicated. <laughs> really, really, I don't know if you can mess it up or not. I really don't know if you can mess it up or not. I, I, like I said, I think there are biblical, biblical conditions to get prayers answered, but, but listen, I believe you'll never feel that way again if you understand those conditions are not man-made, but they're God-made. And, and I, I believe that there are some here tonight that may have given up on prayer, or you may not pray like you should, or as, and that's what I hear a lot of, I don't pray like I should. And really what we're trying to say is we don't pray as often as we should. Amen? And not necessarily that we don't pray, pray like we should. Somebody said to me, Pastor, how, how can you know how to pray? How can you pray in public let me answer that for you okay I'm fixing to give you a good pointer here here's how you can be comfortable praying in public it's very theological so you might want to write it down as I don't say much theological stuff the way you can be a good public prayer is to be a good private prayer wow <laughs> prayer takes practice do you know that? They, you're, really? I mean, you, you're, you're not going to go to a golf course tomorrow if you've never played and hit a ball. <laughs> you might, but you, it's going to be luck or, um, you know, beginner's luck usually. Uh, anything you get good at, you've got to practice. Prayer's the same, th same way, guys. Prayer takes practice. Hey, you know what? It is difficult to pray for 30 minutes. Anybody ever tried that? 30 minutes of prayer is work. How about an hour? How about three hours? Think about that. It takes a lot of work to do that. There are some people that can pray that long. I'm satisfied they can. I can remember growing up, and I had an uncle. His name was Guy V. Shelton, and Guy V. was a, was a preacher. And I think the reason I'm going bald today is because as much fun as I made fun of my Uncle Guy. 
because I used to mock and laugh at him because he was a ball-headed Baptist preacher. But I remember going home with my cousin, and I loved going home because I had bicycles and basketball goals and all this fun stuff. But what I really didn't like is of the morning. Every morning he brought his family in. They gathered around the living room on their couches, and they prayed. The whole family knelt down and prayed aloud. And they did the same thing every night, twice a day. And that guy could pray for a solid hour. No problem. He could pray for longer than that. And I've been in that kneeling position at his house wanting to go ride my bike or go to bed or something for that hour. But, but I never realized at the time that's, that's something that's a lost. It's lost in this generation. We don't know how to pray anymore. Amen. Uh, I mean, to, to have somebody to pray that long. And, and that's amazing because I remember when Christ clear, cleaned out the temple and they were doing all the stuff in the temple and he, he walked through there and was kicking over tables and throwing out money. He said, listen, my house will be called a house of preaching. That's not what he said, is it? He said, my house is going to be a house of prayer. And so prayer is an integral part. So I said all of that to say this. We need to know how to pray and I remember when I was a kid, it was so much easier to pray. You remember praying as a kid? Anybody? I, I've got some prayers here from children at different ages. and here, I was going to read some of them to you because I think they're great. Here's one children's prayer. This is Debbie. She's age seven. Dear God, please send a new baby for Mama. The new baby you sent last week cries way too much. Amen, that's a good prayer. <laughs> Jimmy, six-year-old, here's Jimmy's prayer. Dear God, who did you make smarter, boys or girls? My sister and I want to know. <laughs> Wanting God to settle an argument there. Here's Norma, age eight. Dear God, how many angels are there in heaven? I'd like to be the first kid in my class to know the answer. <laughs> Hank is seven. Hank, dear Lord, thank you for the nice day today. You even fooled the TV weatherman. <laughs> David, age seven, dear God, I need a raise in my allowance. Could you have one of your angels tell my daddy? Thank you. <laughs> Angela, age eight, dear God, this is my prayer. Could you please give my brother some brains? So far, he doesn't have any. Wow. They're simple prayers, but guess what they are? They're prayers. Children, just pray in faith, believing. <laughs> I, I, I think there are some things here that we can use, and I'm going to give you Scripture to go along with them. And so just to maybe help us get our prayers answered. So if you want to write it down, write it down, because I think it's important. Uh, if you're taking notes, I believe if you're going to pray and you're going to get your prayer answered, one of the things we always need to do is we need to pray in Jesus' name. I think that's so important. Uh, I think John chapter 14, uh, and I don't think I wrote these down back there, guys, but John chapter 14, verses 13 and 14, I think it, I think it pretty well covers that is praying in the name of Jesus. Whatever you ask in my name, that will I do, that the Father may be glorified in the Son. Whatsoever you ask, if you shall ask anything in my name, what? I'll do it. Now, we're talking about getting prayers answered. Jesus is telling us, you want power. You want power to have your prayers answered then one thing we need to learn to do is we need to make our prayers in Jesus' name. We, you may think that sounds a, a little bit uh, Pentecostal. and I, Listen, I don't want to scare you, but I'm not going to let the Pentecostal steal that from the Baptist. Amen. Uh, that's biblical, man, that we ask in Jesus' name. We'll, we'll come closer to getting our prayers answered praying in Jesus' name in any other way. And that's what he says. If you'll ask it, listen, uh, you ever wondered why we tack on that in Jesus' name stuff at the end of our prayers? Well, it's because Christ's words tells us to there. And we just read it. Whatever you ask in my name, so that the Son may bring glory to the Father, you ask me for anything in my name, and I'm going to do it. It's pretty clear to me that we're to pray to 
Jesus Christ. Anybody want to argue with that? Very plain, isn't it? Now, who else would we pray to? Well, there's a lot of people praying to a lot of things nowadays. But will you and I, listen, as believers, we ought to, we ought to pray in Jesus' name. And, and that's what, uh, I, listen, I, I think it's important. If you're not getting your prayers answered, how are you praying? Pray in Jesus' name is another way I believe that we can get our prayers answered is we need to be abiding in him and in his word. See, that condition of prayer reminds me of my relationship that I have with my heavenly father. Uh, I can relate as a parent. I know where Christ is coming from uh, because, you know, I'm more likely to give my children stuff when they're being obedient. Amen? I mean, I, I don't want to reward my kids for being little brats. Anybody here do that? <laughs> oh, honey, you've been horrible today. Here's your new bicycle. <laughs> Nobody does that. You say, that's silly. I agree. <laughs> I want my prayers answered. So if I want my prayers answered, guess what? I got a better chance of getting my prayers answered if I'm obedient. Amen? I don't think God's going to say, well, yeah, boy, you, you little disobedient child of mine. <laughs> you don't do anything I ask you to do. You never talk to me. When you sit down and eat your food, you don't even thank me for that. You're ungrateful. So, yeah, I'd love to do that for you. <laughs> Does that make sense to y'all? Because it makes sense to me. If I'm going to get God's best and I'm going to get my prayers answered, then I'm going to behave myself and I'm going to be obedient to God the Father, to God the Son. When the Holy Ghost tells me to do something, I'm going to try to do that. Why? Because when I pray, I expect my prayers to be answered. That's a condition. It's not my condition. But I believe, I believe if I'm not obedient to God, he doesn't have any obligation to answer my prayers. I, I, you know, I, I remember as a kid figuring that out. <laughs> a few days before something come out that I really wanted, I'd just start behaving, right? What do we do? What do we do? Around Christmas time, as kids, what do our kids do? <laughs> Same thing we husbands do now. About Christmas time, we start behaving. Amen. Why? Because we want the goodies. That's exactly why. Same thing. Listen, we do the same thing as Christians, uh, but we ought to be a little bit better about that. What is it that we want? See, we, we're not going to trick God. We can't pull the wool over the eyes of Jesus. So we have to follow what the Bible instructs us to do. We have to try to live up to what God's called us to do. That's why John 15, 7, if you remain in me and my words remain in you, you can ask whatever you wish and it'll be given to you. That's what it says. <laughs> You've got you to abide in me, man. You gotta be, you gotta walk close enough. I never did, and I've been to this place before. I never did like not being able to go to God in prayer at a second's notice. There have been times in my life when I needed to pray and ask God to do something for me, and I had to repent 30 minutes before I ever asked Him. You say, Well, preacher, that's your fault. Well, maybe it is. But that's how I felt. There's been times in my life that I didn't, I didn't have that much time to pray. I just needed to say, God, you've got to help me. God, I need you. And if I'm walking with him and abiding in him, they don't have to worry about it. Listen to me. And that goes right along with my third point. We must be keeping his commandments. See, if our hearts don't condemn us, <laughs> we have confidence before God and we receive any we receive from him anything that we ask because we obey his commandments and we do what pleases him. 1 John 3, if you back up a little bit, verses 21 and 22. If you look at that, you'll find out that, that God does have some expectations on us of keeping his commandments. I mean, uh, again, I go back to my, my relationship with my kids. Um, I'm more apt to do things for them if they are obedient to the rules. <laughs> you say, preacher, we're not, under the, we're not under the law. We're under grace. I'm not talking about your salvation. I'm talking about getting your prayers answered. You know? I mean, there, when we don't get our prayers answered, there's something on our end that's not right, church. I'm telling you. 
It's, it's on our, it's not on his end. God's already said, hey, here's how to get your prayers answered. You do this, 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 and this, and I will answer your prayers. Did we read that? That's what he said. Now, his answer may not be the one I want, but it'll be an answer, and it'll be the right answer. If we want our prayers answered, listen, we got to keep his commandments. You know what else? We got to, we got to give him thanks. At that same time, thanking God ahead of time is like showing confidence he's going to answer your prayer. That's why Philippians tell us don't be anxious about anything, but in everything by prayer and petition with thanksgiving, present your request, make your request known to God. How do I make my request known? I see again, don't be anxious about anything, but in everything by prayer, petition with what? Thanksgiving <laughs> ahead of time. Being thank God, I'm going to go ahead and thank you. Amen. You ever heard that? <laughs> I'm going to just go ahead and thank you. Because I believe, God, either you're going to do it or you're not going to do it. And I'm going to thank you either way because if you don't do it, then that's, that's what's best for me. And if you do do it, that's what's best for me. That's good, ain't it? How, but listen, we, we ought to be thankful. Man, <laughs> this one. See, it's easy to praise God and give him thanks that he deserves when, when, when we're getting what we want and what, when we're doing well. But the Bible says that even when things stink in our life and it's no fun and when we're suffering, we still ought to give thanks to God. <clears throat> Think about that. <laughs> and, and I love it because uh, I, I thought my sermon was going to get preached before I even get started when Brother Herb said, thank God for the rain. I thought about this point because, you know what, he's right. <laughs> We're supposed to thank God for everything and to be thankful for everything and in everything. That's tough, isn't it, church? I mean, that's, to me, that's bitter medicine because I, I don't always get my way with God and it's tough for me to thank God when I don't get my way. But if I want my prayers answered, I need to learn to be thankful when things are great and then when things stink. I need to still praise him and give him thanks in my prayer life. That makes God want to answer our prayers. I'm going to be honest with you. That's just the way he is. <laughs> Even when things aren't good. Listen, we can't, we, we, we can't always find something to be thankful for. Always, we can give God all of our cares. We can let go and let God. We can stop worrying and start praying. A really cool thing is that, listen, God never commands us to worry about anything, but he promises over and over again that, it, that he'll look out for those who follow after him and who keeps his commandments. Let me give you another one to get your prayers answered. Man, there's more action out there tonight than they are up here. We have to be watching for the answers. <laughs> Sometimes we're, we're praying and praying for something and then we just give up when God already has given us an answer uh, that we maybe just weren't keeping a close eye on things. That's why Colossians chapter 4 t warns us, devote yourself to prayer, being watchful, and being thankful. See, not only are we to be thankful in our prayers to get our prayers answered, but we're also to be watching for that answer. Because if we're not watching, sometimes we'll miss the answer. And the way we miss the answer is because prayer is very seldom. Listen to what I'm fixing to say. And I'll give you some scripture maybe here in just a minute. Prayers are very seldom answered exactly the way in our head we think they should be answered. A lot of times prayers are answered and we miss it. Because our narrow way of looking how that prayer should be answered. We have to be thankful, but we also have to be watchful. <laughs> Don't miss the answer because you gave up looking for it. If you pray, the Bible is plain. Let me, let me just say this. Is God obligated to hear your prayers? According to what we've been reading, as a believer, absolutely. Absolutely. God hears our prayers. <laughs> kind of like the story when John and Peter go run into the tomb of Jesus and Mary Magdalene and, and, and they leave, but she stays. 
kind of like that because, you know, she, she didn't give up. <laughs> she stayed, and she was watchful for the answer, and she was rewarded by seeing Christ. We have to be watching for the answer. And we're moving along. Here's another one. We all, we must seek spiritual things first. <laughs> now this is where we get a little backwards. We, we pray for what we want. You, you don't have to raise your hand on this, but how many times do we go to God with a laundry list of things that we want God to do for us, right? Because we've been taught that's what prayer is. You just go to prayer and you just, you just go tell God. You just, you know, this name it, claim it religious crowd wants you to understand that all you've got to do is, is just name it and claim it and it's yours. <laughs> got to be careful with that mess because, because there are some conditions here. And one of those is I believe that we are to seek spiritual things first. So, but when I'm praying, I have to ask, what am I seeking in life? What am I really devoted to? Am I seeking my own will? Am I asking for my will to be done? Or am I asking for his will to be done? Nothing good is going to come out of that unless we're seeking the kingdom of God. The word of God's pretty plain on that, isn't it? What is it? God says, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. Isn't that what it says? So even in our prayers, we're supposed to be seeking that first. Seeking what he wants first. But seek ye first the kingdom of God. And then all these other things will be given to you. That word, that's what that means. You've got to seek him first, God. I want to seek you first. I want to thank you for all the answered prayers. I want to thank you for being a God that's looking out for me. I want to thank you for taking care of my family, for food, for clothes, for a roof. All those things we ought to thank God for. I know that, that listen, that kind of, well, that's going to take a while. See, now that 10 minutes prayer doesn't look very long, does it? And then once I get done thanking him, we couldn't thank him if we, if we took all night. We couldn't thank him for his goodness. All those little things that we take for granted every day. If we, if we had to thank him for everything, we'd be in trouble, wouldn't we? But it ought to be our goal to thank him. And then we ought to seek, God, what's your will for my life? We ought to be seeking his will for our life. Because here's the funny thing about that. When I seek his will for my life, all that laundry list of stuff that's my will that I want more of my trinkets and more of my toys and I'm going to ask God to make me healthy, wealthy and wise and give me all this stuff. But when I seek him first and I pray, God, I need your will, your will for my life, then all that stuff, that list gets shorter and shorter. Amen. It gets smaller and smaller and smaller because as I'm abiding in him and I'm, I'm seeking his will and I'm doing his will, my prayers begin to change. Thank God for that, that I, I become so less self-centered and I, be, I begin to seek his stuff. And then, then the main thing starts coming along. You know what the main thing is, right? Is that, God, I want to be righteous. I want to be right with you. I want to be right with my kids. I want to be right with my wife. God, I want, and, and here's what happens, guys. Listen to me. We start getting sweeter. <laughs> well, I don't need to be any sweeter, preacher. I know. You're sweet enough. Hey, man, I, you, listen, don't, my wife, she, she'll tell you right now, and she said this to me a thousand times. She said, I can always tell when you've been alone with Jesus. I can always tell when your life is lining up. I can always tell when you have revival in your soul. Ask her tonight. I challenge you, ask her. And I'll say, what do you mean? She said, I can always tell when you're praying. I said, why is that? And she said, because you're a whole lot sweeter. <laughs> Amen. See, if, I, if I'm prayed up, it makes me sweet. <laughs> y'all y'all are out there saying right now, <laughs> y'all are out there, boy, I, I hope my husband starts praying. Amen. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to give you wives a little heads up here. I hope my, I hope my husband, I'm going to start encouraging my husband to pray. Amen. If it may, I've said that's what it does for me. 
And I think it will do it for you. And some of you husbands may be going, my wife's fixing to really get a prayer life. Amen. We start leading different, right? But that's what happens, church. And, that, and, and then, you know what? God starts knowing the desires of your heart. He starts answering some of your prayers. And then you get real hungry for more of that. And to get more of that, that means your life is going to be more righteous. And you're going to be more right. We've got to seek those spiritual things first. Listen, if you read the verse in context with the surrounding scripture, you know that what Jesus is talking about here is our daily needs. He's talking about food, shelter, clothes. <laughs> That's what he's talking about. Is it Matthew 6, Seek ye first the kingdom of God. I was trying to think of the verse. Sometimes I write them down, sometimes I don't. Uh, but seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And all these things, food, shelter yeah there it is i had a momentary lapse of where that verse was um all these things he's talking about all these what is all these things food shelter clothing whatever you need listen if you're seeking god's saying look if you'll seek me i'll take care of you you don't even have to ask for food shelter clothing and all that stuff all you gotta do is seek me just seek me Go after me. Look for me. Listen, we must seek spiritual things. First, we have to pray for our fellow Christians as well. <laughs> pray in the Spirit on all occasions with all kinds of prayer requests. The, man, this place is a big place. The world's a big place. There's a ton of Christians all over the globe, and the Bible's clear, and it instructs us to be in prayer for all the church. We have to, listen, let me give you this one. I'm going to close in just a minute, but I want to give you a couple more here. We have to seek God's mind or God's will. We should always be praying, Lord, not my will, but thy will be done. That's what I'm talking about. I want his will. The closer I get to him, the more I know that he cares about me and God's will for me. God's will for me is not to break me, but God's will for me is to bless me. Maybe not the way I see it, and, and what I count blessings, but the way that he sees it and the way he counts blessings. Does that make sense? We want God's blessings, and the way we get God's blessings is to do what God's called us to do. Oh, this is a good one. I talked about this a little bit Sunday night. We, we must not harbor hard feelings toward anyone. Now, this is a difficult one. Um, if we have anything against anyone, we're commanded to forgive them. And I believe Mark eleven twenty five 25 says we're to do it instantly. Just like that. Hey, I forgive you. I mean forgive. I'm talking about forgiveness. I'm going to forgive, but I ain't going to forget. Well, you ain't forgiven. <laughs> if that's your attitude, right? Amen. <laughs> I'm going to forget, preacher, I forgive them, but I ain't never going to forget it. Well, you didn't forgive them. <laughs> Bunch of Baptists, quit acting like that. <laughs> I don't know why God's not answering my prayers. <laughs> I do, because you ain't forgetting. <laughs> Amen. You got to forgive and forget. <laughs> forgive and, preacher, you ever been burned? Oh, I can tell you some stories. Ooh. But you know what? I'm not going to. You know why? Because they're under the blood. But I mean that. I don't know. I might have an enemy tonight. I don't know if I do. I don't know who it is. But I'm telling you, I used to have a bunch of them because I couldn't forgive because I couldn't forget. And the Word of God's pretty plain about that. I mean, we don't need to be having any hard feelings. When, when we stand praying, if we hold anything against anyone, if we don't forgive them, the Bible tells us that we ought to forgive them. We have to forgive them so that your Father in heaven may forgive you your sins. Do you know the Bible said that? That's the book, man. You have to forgive people. You want your prayers answered? You want, you want forgiveness of sin? Think about that. That's kind of a tough one there. <laughs> and you've got to forgive people. Wow. In order to be forgiven, we've got to learn to forgive. Wow. I want you to be here Sunday. I want you to bring a friend with you. The good Lord will in Sunday morning, if I can at all, I'm going to be preaching a message on getting past your past. You know people's got been dogged by their past, huh? You got to get past that. And the only way to do that is through forgiveness. 
and forgetfulness. See, I didn't give away Sunday's mail. I won't be able to preach it now. God will change my mind be like, you lied to him now. The devil will say, yeah, you didn't lie. Listen, but we've got to learn that, church. We have got to get past our past. You need to invite somebody with you that's struggling with that mess. Let God and the Holy Spirit fix them. We have to be, listen, I'm going to close with that one. We, we've got to learn as believers to forgive and forget and march on in joy and peace and in victory. We have to. There's no choice in the matter. Somebody, if somebody mistreats you, oh, listen, sometimes I get the pooch mouth and get mad at folk. I know it's hard to believe as sweet and loving as I am. That's my wife. I just go to rent and somebody says something bad about me, hurts my little feelings. I can't believe they did that. Bless God, I'll show them. And then the Holy Spirit reminds me, big boy, you want your prayers answered? Hey, there's a few prayers that I, 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 I pray every day. And I want God to hear them every day. And this, is, this helps, keeps me straight. Maybe it'll help you. You know what one of my prayers is? God, take care of my kids. Lord, I want you to take care of them. Now, I, the reason I say take care of them, I don't say, Lord, keep them safe, do this, do that, do this. Because that take care of them encompasses I can't do that. But God, whatever's best for them, you already know. And so I'm asking you to take care of them. That's a prayer every day that I want God to answer for me. And you know what? I'm afraid that if I get mad at you and I get the pooch mouth at you or somebody else in my family and I, I refuse to forgive and forget, whether it was wrong or not, what if that, that's the day that I need to be able to pray that prayer and have that prayer answered? And because of my stubbornness and my sin, S-I-N, maybe God that day doesn't answer that prayer. Huh? So you kind of get where I'm coming from there. You say, preacher, that's a stretch. You call it what you want to, but it keeps me straight. There's another prayer. God, I want you to save all my grandbabies. Amen? Because all my kids are saved. And I'm already touching their doors. I get a half a chance. They think I'm going to be like, Lord Jesus, save this baby. <laughs> their mom and daddy come in the bedroom. I don't care, folks. I'll anoint their pillows, whatever. I'll anoint the bedspread. I want God to save my grandbabies. That's a prayer I got to have answered. And I believe God will answer it. The Bible says the effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. In order to be a righteous man, you got to forgive and forget. Give me an amen. You have to, church. You're wondering why. Well, I ain't had that prayer. I ain't seen that prayer answered. Are you looking for it? Are you right with God? Are you doing what you're supposed to do? Have you met the conditions to get your prayers answered? If you ain't, you need to. Amen. Father, we love you. Thank you for your word. Thank you for the convicting power of the Holy Spirit. God, help us all to pray fervently, to seek you out, but to be right when we do. That, God, we could see the power manifested through our prayer lives and the prayer life of our church. Lead us and guide us. Direct us in the path we need to go in. Give us courage to walk that way. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen and amen. Stay dry. Put on your galoshers.